We'd like to thank Audible for supporting PBS. Hey, smart people, Joe here. Horror vacui, nature despises a vacuum. It's a term maybe you've heard in art, the need to fill all space with detail, but it's an idea that goes all the way back to the science of Aristotle, the smartest guy alive in the fourth century BC. Now, Aristotle believed the universe was full of things, no matter how small you tried to cut it up, so there could be no place where there wasn't anything. The idea of a vacuum, a space full of nothing, was impossible. <laughs> okay then, Mr. Aristotle, how do you explain this? For the next 2,000 years, everybody pretty much agreed with Aristotle. Vacuums, voids, and empty spaces couldn't exist. That included the Catholic Church, which was bad news for a guy named Galileo. In 1634, Galileo had just been brought before the Inquisition for the crime of believing the Earth wasn't the center of the universe, which was another one of Aristotle's bright ideas. In exchange for keeping his head, he'd promised to retire his telescope, but while he was under house arrest, he published one final book that basically jump-started physics as we know it today. Hidden in that book is an experiment that changed the way that we look at something we can't really see, air. Galileo took a glass bottle, and into that bottle he forced more air. He put it on a scale, opened the valve, letting the compressed air escape, and the bottle was suddenly lighter. He proved that air weighs something, and if you took enough away, you'd be left with nothing. A vacuum. Thing is, everyone was so scared of the church, Galileo had to smuggle his book all the way to the Netherlands to get it published. But his book eventually made it into the hands of some curious young scientists, and good thing too, because Galileo had gotten something very wrong. One of those young scientists was named Evangelista Torricelli, who was the owner of some amazing facial hair. Nice, dude. Now, Torricelli had thought a lot about what drew liquid up in pipes and straws. What forces the liquid up? Does our mouth create a vacuum that pulls it up? Well, Galileo believed vacuums and empty spaces were basically magical, full of a strange power to attract liquids. But Torricelli thought that idea really sucked. Well, thanks to Galileo, Torricelli knew air weighed something. Maybe it was heavy enough to push liquid around. And this is how he tested that idea. He filled a glass tube with mercury, closed at one end, and he submerged the opened end in a pool of more mercury. The mercury level in the tube dropped, but it didn't empty all the way. Torricelli added a second mercury-filled tube, only this one had a large glass globe on its closed end. If Galileo was right and the empty space had the power to pull on liquid, the tube with more empty space should pull its mercury level higher. But the mercury ended up at exactly the same level in both tubes. No matter how much vacuum was in the tube, the force holding up the mercury was the same. Vacuums don't suck, air pushes. A bubble of air as big as the tip of my little finger contains more than a billion billion molecules, and every one of them is zipping around and colliding with others a billion times a second. Air pressure is the force of these collisions on a given area. We can change the force of collisions by altering the kinetic energy, altering the number of particles, or altering the size of the container. This atomic pinball is why the air in a tire can hold up an entire car, and it's why air doesn't just push down, it pushes in every direction. When we expand our mouths to drink from a straw, the atmosphere pushes the liquid up into our mouth. When we expand our diaphragms to breathe, we aren't sucking air in, the atmosphere is falling into our lungs. And when you turn on the vacuum cleaner, you aren't sucking anything. The atmosphere is pushing dirt out of your house. I mean, once you know this, you really can't look at the world the same way again. Torricelli never published his results about vacuums and air pressure because he was afraid of that whole Inquisition thing, but he did write it in a letter to a friend who told a few more friends, and thanks to that secret science underground, a few curious folks across Europe began to ask just how strong this invisible stuff around us really is. 
1657, the mayor of Magdeburg, Germany, Otto von Guericke, had figured out how to pump air out of two tight-fitting half domes, forming a sealed globe with a vacuum inside. Now, the weight of air is so powerful, it allegedly took 32 horses to rip the hemispheres apart. Not only does air weigh something, it weighs a very great deal indeed. Enough to overpower even someone as buff as me. Ready? Ready. The mass of all the air in this room is approximately 500 kilograms. What's crazy is it's pushing on me with enough force that even though the vacuum hose only lowers the pressure inside the bag by about 10%, I'm basically immobilized. This seems to defy common sense. Air just doesn't seem that heavy. I mean, if we live at the bottom of an ocean of air, how can we move through it without even noticing it? If air is pressing on us that hard all the time, why don't our bodies get crushed? Well, because as hard as the atmosphere pushes down on us, well, we're pushing right back. Our bones, our skin are all incredibly strong. Any open spaces like our lungs are being pushed out by air so they don't collapse. And our cells are filled with liquid, which has its own pressure pushing back on the atmosphere. In fact, without this ocean of air, we'd look as ugly as the deep sea blobfish looks outside of its ocean. They're surprisingly handsome in their native pressure. So next time life gets you down, or if it ever just feels like too much, just take a second to remember how much pressure you've put up with every day of your life without even realizing it. You're stronger than you think. Stay curious. We'd like to thank Audible for supporting PBS. Now, Audible has a huge selection of audiobooks. You probably know that. Their collection also includes Audible Originals, audio titles created by storytellers from around the literary world, like the Genius Dialogues, winners of the MacArthur Genius Grant sharing their stories, from Jad Abumrad, who founded Radiolab, to the scientific magician James Randi, to Manu Prakash, the engineer who invented an origami microscope. Smart people. Visit audible.com slash OK or text OK to 500 500 to learn more. Members own their books and can access them anytime. To learn more, you can visit audible.com slash OK or text OK to 500 500.